Yeah, I think, you know, you really need to define what a lead is at your company, right? So once you define what those qualifications are, you know, that they own a home and that they live in your marketplace and, you know, different factors, it may be, you know, the value of the home may be important to some companies, may not be important to others. So there's a variety of factors. And once you define that, you have to then kind of craft your scripting and your process to make certain that you're qualifying for those things. This is the Wealthy Contractor Podcast, brought to you by G4 Marketing. Interviews with today's top home improvement entrepreneurs about marketing, sales, money, mindset, and lifestyle. Now, here's your host, Brian Kaskavalsian. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. This is Brian Kaskavalsian with G4 Marketing Group. And today, I have with me my old friend, uh, Tony Hody. Um, Tony, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for having me, Brian. Awesome. So it's been a little while since you've been here. A lot has happened. Um, the last time you were here, we talked about just how good things are. You called it the, the fish are jumping into the boat. Um, it's kind of still happening, but we're starting to see the winds change a little bit. Stuff is starting to come and changes are going to happen. So um, to those of you listening, I wanted to talk a little bit with Tony about that because Tony's got a very unique perspective. And um, for those of you that don't know who Tony is, Tony, let's let's just do give everybody like the two minute version of your of your story. All right, wonderful. About 30 years ago, I got a part time job down in Columbus, Ohio, um, at Ohio State to work for a home improvement company going door to door. It was supposed to be a part time job for beer money, and it turned into my career. Um, so I knocked on, on doors there, uh, canvassing around job sites. I worked at home shows, worked inside retail stores, generating leads as a promoter, um, eventually went into in-home sales. So really have a really very well-rounded uh, background in lead generation in the home remodeling industry, all kind of aggressive manufactured leads, um, not necessarily, you know, sitting back and waiting for the phone to ring. Um, since that time, I've There you go. You're good? back. back yeah. On? Okay. yeah. Since um, that time. Yeah. Since that time, um, I have started my own business uh, several years ago, Window Depot and Bath Depot up in Cleveland. And, um, you know, we're, we're plugging away up here in the Northeast Ohio market selling home improvements. So I've kind of well-rounded everything from lead generation to, you know, uh, just the overall management of the business. And for the longest time, you know, from the time, the first time I met you, you were Tony Hody, the consultant. So you would go out and you would show people how to knock on door. By the way, Tony is the master at at face to face lead generation. Um, what did you call what What did you call? We call them nebulous, not nebulous leads, but what would you call it? Well, I mean, manufactured, kind of manufactured. manufactured yes. <laughs> the so. one of the most beautiful things about this business is you, I mean, the bad thing about it is, is it starts at zero every single day. Every morning when you walk in, you start at zero. But the good thing is, is that if you know how to do what Tony knows how to do, um, you could go and just pick a neighborhood, drive to it, get out of your car, go start knocking on doors, and somebody's going to let you in and somebody's going to buy something that day. And uh, that's, that's, you know, the good and the bad, I guess, one of the goods and the bads of the home improvement business. So now, so now you own Window Depot, you own Bath Depot, and, um, and you still have the consulting business. So you are a, a busy guy. Um, you also, you have an event coming up. Let's, uh, real right. quick, everybody. So Tony's got an event coming up. Where is it? Columbus, Ohio, right? Back where it all started in Columbus, Ohio. That's is that right. why we're going to Columbus, Ohio? <laughs> it's actually a great city. I mean, I'm telling you, it's a really modern city. I've never city. been I, there. Oh, you're going to love it. All right. 
Well, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be speaking. Um, Tony is going to be talking about what is going on in the industry, um, particularly how it relates to uh, leads and marketing. Um, Megan is going to be there and Megan, I'm, I'm, uh, you guys will hear Megan next. I think, uh, she might be right after Tony or thereabouts, but one of the smartest marketing people in the home improvement industry is, is Megan. And, uh, so anyway, leadcon, tonyhody.com hang out until, you know, when, when we get to the end, we're going to pitch you a little bit on Tony's event. Cause I think you should be there. I think everybody should be there. It, it's a fantastic event. And Tony, um, I, I'll just say ever since I've met Tony, I, I have always been, um, remarkably impressed. And there's very little people that, that impressed me anymore, but I've always been remarkably impressed by this uh, whole thing that you do with this face-to-face -face selling. Cause it's like, like you said, it's going to Walmart and selling people at Walmart on bath systems. It's, it's walking up to strangers doors. And, and it, it, I mean, it's a, an incredible way to build a business, but um, the work itself is not easy work. It's, it's tough work. And I've always been so impressed by, by, your creativity and your um, uh, devotion, <laughs> for lack of a better word, um, to to this craft that you've really built your whole career on. Anyway, so um, yeah, I can't say enough about Tony. I've, I've known him for such a long time. But anyway, so let's talk about let's talk about what's going on out there let's talk about your actual business window depot and bath depot and what you see going on um on the ground well you know we have seen the consumer demand has been way up uh, more than anticipated you know it's kind of ever since covid you know obviously people have been home the contacts rates have been great uh, people have had the money sometimes you wonder how long that's going to last where it's coming from but you know demand has been good on the flip side of that, you know, um, attracting and maintaining uh, good people has been tough. You know, there's not a lot of, um, you know, great talent out there just walking through the doors. So you really have to position your company, your company culture in, in such a way that you're attracting top talent. And I think that's really the challenge for everybody right now in the market. So, you know, when we talk about culture, um, I, I only, and I've, I've admitted this here before, I really only understood culture like when we started doing EOS, because in EOS, you kind of have to define your core values. And yeah. when you start by identifying your core value, this is who we are, then you kind of build the personality of the business behind it. And so, um, and I know that this is a big area for you. So talk a little bit more about culture. Like, what does it take what, what does it really take to create a culture? I mean, you had to create one from scratch, like what, three years ago, four years ago? How, how, how does somebody go about creating a culture? Great question. So yeah, a little over five years ago, started my retail operation. And you know, the focus in mind with respect to culture was creating an environment where people feel safe, right? Not just physically safe, right? But yeah. they feel that they can share their true feelings around how things should be done, around you know what's going on in the business, um, you know, and and having that total transparency among each other, not having fear that management sees things differently or leadership sees things differently, and they can't speak about that or they can't mention that an employee is a problem, you know. So that psychological safety is often mentioned in all the top. Uh, books that you read about culture. And I, I tend to echo those thoughts for sure. And as you mentioned, you know, core values, um, you know, we're going through the EOS system uh, right now with our team. Oh, you are? And, uh, awesome. Yeah. And so, um, you know, trying to gain traction in the business and, yeah. you know, culture is a oh, huge factor for that. Yeah. I mean, culture eats strategy for breakfast, right? So, I mean, you have to get the culture right first because any initiative you inject into your business then is going to be affected by the culture. The culture will propel it or the culture will devour it. 
So some people listening to this and I, and uh, you know, and I, I don't know all of you obviously out there, but I would imagine that there are many of you that have smaller companies where it's really revolves around you and you might have one or two or three people around you. And so like it or not, you have a culture. And so whether you're doing it accidentally or intentionally, you have a culture. So now, Tony, you started with just one or two or and three people, and now you've, you know, grown. By the way, how many people do you have now? Uh, we have, you know, in total, you know, if you're including everybody inside and outside installation and everything, you know, we've got close to a couple dozen. Cool. Yeah. So you got, you got, that's, that's, quite a few people in different departments and things. By the way, you're going to love EOS. You are going to love EOS because you're very process driven, very people driven. And with the accountability piece that you're going to get from EOS and the planning pieces, like coming up with your rocks for the quarter, what you can and can't accomplish. Um, it's going to be tough for you, by the way. Have you started with the quarterly meetings yet? So or you're you know, just really brand familiar. new. So I'm really familiar with the book and I've read it several times. However, yeah. going through it with the team now and, and implementing some of these accountability things. And, yeah. uh, you know, what you're saying, it, it just really strikes a chord about culture because I think that's the balance. You know, uh, Jocko Willink wrote that book, The Dichotomy of Leadership. Yeah. And what it talks about is really, you know, balancing how you hold people accountable without ruffling feathers, right? Yeah. Because everybody wants to have this fun atmosphere where you, you know, if you've got foosball tables and, uh, you know, beanbag chairs and uh, pizza parties and all that kind of stuff. But you know, as well and as beer. I do, you know, where the rubber meets the road, you know, you have to have accountability. And so it's a delicate balance. Yeah. Um, have you got to the, to the rocks yet of coming up with the rocks? So we have not implemented that yet. We're actually okay. in the process of developing okay. what each so, individual department and. Okay, from experience and as your friend, go with the process. It works. Tony is like, Tony, Tony and me are a lot alike in this resort. We have so many flipping ideas. He's one of the most creative people I've ever met. But what happens in those meetings is you take your list of 20 things that you want to do. And I know you've gotten good. You've gotten really good at this. You've had to get really good at this, but you have to like narrow it down to like three or four things. And so, um, but in EOS that just gets amplified because you talk about it every quarter. It's like, oh, no, no, no. We can only do three or four things this quarter. What are the three or four? We can't do your 20 things, Tony. We can only do three or four, or Brian, you know? Um, okay. So, um, so you know what's interesting is I was I was uh, we just did our our mastermind check-in call um, for April and there's quite a few um, uh, people that that are your clients and um, and then we've got quite a few people that are now implementing EOS as well and one of the people said that he walked in this more this morning or yesterday morning and had two resignation letters they had just implemented EOS. And these two people self-selected out because they didn't fit anymore. Because it's like, okay, people, we're, we, we want to create a better company. And so by creating a better company, we want to get more focused on our vision and we want to hold people accountable and all of that. First off, I mean, I told them, look, it's a blessing because they're the, the wrong people um, on the bus, as Jim Collins would say. But what is kind of your your take on on that because people are afraid that hey if i create accountability or if i do this people yeah might not like it yeah you're absolutely right it's a blessing that's what it is i mean it's the system is now weeding out those that no longer belong or never belonged in the first place maybe right and and you know that's what you want you want the system to do that for you you don't want you know arguments you don't want you know um, situations where people are being terminated in unfavorable circumstances abruptly, you know, emotions run high in those scenarios. You get people going on and defaming the company and all kinds of headaches that you never want to deal with, right? Yeah. So you want the system to kind of 
weed out those that don't belong in the culture and attract those that do. Let's pause here for a quick break. In today's world, getting a five-star review on Google from every single one of your customers is critical. This is something that G4 Marketing Group helps hundreds of home improvement and home services companies with every day. So we put together a free five-star customer experience checklist to help you ensure every one of your customers are getting an experience that will turn them into raving fans. You can get your copy of the customer experience checklist today. Just go to g4marketing.com forward slash C-E-X. The checklist will walk you through 30 points in your customer journey that you can improve today. That way, you'll be able to turn today's customers into tomorrow's leads, sales, and profits. Just go to g4marketing.com forward slash C-E-X. That's G-F-O-U-R marketing.com forward slash C-E-X to get your copy of the checklist today. Then, when you're ready to automate your relationship marketing so that your customers grow your business for you, just give G4 Marketing a call at 305-856-8788 and we'll give you a free demo to show you how your future business profits are hiding in today's customers. Now let's get back to the episode. So I, I know you're a big process guy. You have systems and processes for marketing, for sales, and for production. How important is having processes and systems when you're out looking for talent to bring into the company? I think it's absolutely imperative. You know, um, we recently moved to a new office location, which has allowed us to implement better systems, more organization, and all of these things have helped us to attract higher levels of talent. You know, I just had someone come visit the other day and said, wow, I can't believe how much you have upgraded in talent since the first couple of years you were in business. He said, how how are you able to do this? And I said, you know, it's honestly, you know, the systems that we put in place that are now attracting a higher level caliber individual. Um, So it's imperative. It, It affects everything. You know, let's talk about that for a minute, Tony, because. You know, one of the things about this business that's very interesting is that there there are models to follow. It's not like, you know, if you've got a window, if you've got any replacement company, window, roofing, siding, kitchens, bathrooms, um, remodeling, whatever you're in, there is a successful model to follow. You can buy processes like, you know, you're, you're, you know, on that call, there was like three or four people that are using Megan, to, who, who works with Tony uh, on the consulting side to create scripting for their call centers. Now, call center can be one person. It could be 100 people. It doesn't matter. But the people that are answering the phones need to have a process and have assistance. You can buy those systems or you can create your own. Can you talk a little bit about how does somebody that is, you know, we don't have quite processes in place. We're not ready to go out and buy process. So we might have to create them ourselves. How how did you go about doing that, you know, at the beginning? Or how do you help your clients um, on the consulting side with that? Besides just giving it to them. Yeah, I think, you know, you really need to define what a lead is at your company. Right. So once you define what those qualifications are, you know, that they own a home and that they live in your marketplace and, you know, different factors, it may be, you know, the value of the home may be important to some companies, may not be important to others. So there's a variety of factors. And once you define that, you have to then kind of craft your scripting and your process to make certain that you're qualifying for those things. And so you're going to, you know, create that process to generate and replicate over and over again, you know, the types of leads you're looking for. And, you know, the same is true, even when you get into things like installation, you're looking for an outcome and then you kind of reverse engineer what you're hoping to accomplish in the end. Yeah. Do you, do you write it down? Do you create videos? Do you, how do you, how do you do that? Yeah. So definitely like to, you know, have it written down. 
you know, I'm not huge on using word for word robotic type scripting because I think it can alienate, you know, consumers from time to time and it can really take empathy and understanding out of a situation. You know, we want to have empathic listening when we're on the phone. However, you know, you do need to definitely have, you know, your different steps in the process clearly identified. You need to have certain key phrases and questions identified. Um, transitions from one step to the next step should be uh, practiced and identified. And I think that's really what it boils down to is really kind of rehearsing and practicing and having a formula for success that you're utilizing over and over again versus winging it. Yeah. Well, and, and so this is also what kind of gives you the ability to build your business, to be able to build it profitably, to be able to, you know, bring on talent as needed in order for you to, to grow it. But it also, more importantly, I think gives you control because we don't want to be, we can't be with every single marketer that's out in the field. I don't know how many people are on your marketing team, but it's like, you're not there with them every single day. I don't know how many salespeople you have, but you're not with them every single day. You got marketing right as Tony and I are doing this at two o'clock on a Wednesday. So you've got marketing people out in the field. You've got salespeople out in the field. You've got installers out in the field and you got people in the office and it's two o'clock on a Wednesday and you're here talking with me. That's right. So the only way you can do that is by having a process that people can follow so that it's being done the way that you need it to be done or want it to be done. Right. And then right. after you create those systems, Brian, then, then what you have to do is put another system in place to inspect what you expect. Yeah. So periodically listening to recorded phone calls, periodically, you know, inspecting installations, having, you know, customer satisfaction surveys that indicate that things are being followed. So there's a variety of things that you have to do to kind of inspect what you expect. But first is building the systems for your individual employees, the departments and the department heads. And then it's those systems to make sure that they're being followed. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned a few minutes ago, you used the word practice. Talk about that. Well, you know, we don't do enough of it in our, in our business. You know, you look at professional sports or you look at musicians, you look at actors that rehearse. I mean, the cream of the crop in every field, they are dedicated to practice. You know, they, they drill, they rehearse, and we just don't do enough of it in the home remodeling industry. And the ones that do are highly successful. You know, they, they understand that you have to kind of hone in on these skills. And, you know, I think another thing that's really relevant here is that when you look at things like sales, we're very likely to practice, right? You know, we're out there doing it every day and we also are likely to practice at sales meetings, installations, you know, we're out there doing it every day. But what about things like courageous conversations or difficult conversations? Um, things that come up in businesses on a regular basis where you have to handle uh, employees that are unhappy, right? We don't ever practice those types of things. And it's really important that we do that because you know, if you wanna build a great culture, you're gonna need to flex those muscles and you're gonna need to be prepared for those inevitable situations. That's really interesting. So talk more about that, those difficult conversations. Yeah, How I do think you prepare that, for that? Well, you know they're coming, right? We, we know they're yeah. coming. Yeah. Difficult situations with customers, right? Angry yeah. customers that call in or for this reason or that reason. Uh, right now, you know, long lead times is a common, um, you know, reason for someone to call up and impatient. You know, you're, you're also going to have, you know, employees that are going to, you know, maybe um, stop in the office or send an email and say, I I'm dissatisfied. I'm unhappy with this. I'm unhappy with the way another employee might be treating me or the way I'm being managed. And so um, you have to prepare for that. You, you know it's coming. So crafting, you know, the right response in a time where you're level-headed and thinking logically is incredibly important versus waiting until something gets really inflamed and, you know, you're, you're dealing with emotions. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I've never quite 
I, I don't I don't think I've heard anybody talk about hey being ready for those situations. But what great advice! Um, I want to talk. I want to talk about marketing. That's that's your you know that's your big thing. And you know it's interesting. Um, um, leads are plentiful. Um, home shows are back in, in person stuff is back. I would imagine you guys are doing a bunch of events and talk to us about what you see out there right, right now. We're doing this in April, which is, you know, kind of the height Q2 is kind of the height of the home improvement season. Um, so things should be very, very good right now, but what do you kind of see out there? Yeah, I think, you know, Q2 is strong because you've got a lot of the leads that are generated in the first quarter from home shows, and that really kind of gets the ball rolling. And then the, as those home shows start to fall off the schedule, uh, people need to start looking for other events, right? Other live events that are not home shows, you know, fairs, festivals. And so we have to have some other supplemental lead generation other than just you know, those people that are calling us. I, I love the inbound lead. It's great. They're ready to go. They're excited. However, you know, there are never enough of them if you want to scale your business. You always have to kind of find new ways to generate leads in a way that's scalable so that you can continue to grow. So you and I were doing work for Bath Planet at the same time back in like, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago, before you started Window Depot. And I'll never forget, you were talking about, and I'm not going to remember the exact type of event, but you were talking about weird, obscure events before anybody was talking about them. And talk to us a little, what is like the weirdest, uh, most obscure event uh, that you've that you've done so far this year or you've got planned that's coming and then talk a little bit about the strategy because again you got to be creative with this stuff and um so what do you got weird that's coming up? it's not weird anymore yeah. but what do you got that's weird coming up yeah we we, we have a lot of them here in our, in our market i mean everything from you know gun shows fairs festivals you know we have a woolly bear festival in Vermilion, Ohio, which is a small town there. Um, just all kinds of, like you said, obscure events, senior shows. If you're marketing to um, senior citizens, if you have uh, you know, bath products or uh, gutter protection products, things that tend to um, lean towards you know, senior citizens, all kinds of them. I mean, across the country, I've, I've worked <laughs> at a number of them. Yeah, um, I think one of the ones you mentioned back then was like a wine festival. I think there was another one that was like golf. And, and I'll never forget what you said was anywhere that your target market is going to gather, and I'm butchering your words, but I'm paraphrasing, but anywhere that your target market is going to gather would be a good place for you to be, right? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And then what you have to do, the tricky part, I think, for people is you have to really connect with them on that level. So if yeah. you're at a golf show, kind of tailor your exhibit around or center your, your exhibit around golf, have a putt to win contest or a driving contest. You know, we, we did a rifle show where we had, you know, stuffed animals, stuffed squirrels, stuffed rabbits. And, you know, we had these cork guns where, you know, you were shooting um, stuffed animals off of the gutter display. And so, you know, we're connecting with the audience based on what they came to the event to see. You know, if they came there for wine, let's talk to them about wine. You know, we've guessed how many corks are inside, you know, the, the wine vase and, you know, win a gift card or, or that type of thing. But you got to engage them in, a, in an environment like that. And that's really critical. Yeah. Um, meet them where they're at. Um... You know, a lot of people, I would imagine, are, it, it's, it, it, how do I say this? It's almost scary to, to set up at something like that. You, you might not have the creativity. You might not have the manpower. Um, you may not have the right pitch. So can you talk just in general terms about what it takes to make 
events in general successful and profitable? Yeah. So we, we have a process for it, you know, and it really involves, you know, first kind of engaging people. And, you know, in order to engage people, we just discussed it, you have to meet them where they're at. And I think the, a big mistake people make in, in kind of scaring people away from their booth spaces, they'll go to a wine festival or a golf show and, and their, their exhibit space is all about home improvement. And so, you know, instead of attracting people, you know, they're pursuing people. And, you know, that doesn't really work very well. Um, so, you know, that's the first part of the equation is engaging. And then, you know, we want to qualify people, make sure that they own a home and that, you know, there are going to be some people at these events that don't fit our target demographic. And so we got to kind of weed those out, right? And then, you know, after we've kind of qualified them, you know, we can move on into, you know, really getting their, their excitement level, kind of isolating what product would be most important to them. What are they doing next at their home? And get them talking about that. Hold on one second. Can you hear that banging? I cannot. You cannot? Okay, sorry. So get them excited about the product. And you have a unique way of doing this. Yeah, so I mean, we, we have a funnel. We literally have a funnel where it's step-by-step step how you go about from taking a total stranger at an event at a, at a retail store and kind of just funneling them down to an appointment. And there's a clearly defined process for that. And um, it, it's a lot of fun. You know, and the other thing too, we should talk about just quickly is economics. So, you know, if you know what your allowable lead cost is, um, say it's 300 bucks, right? So now you look at, okay, we've got this wine show event. It's for what, four hours? It's an afternoon, right? So now it's like, okay, how much is it going to cost me to go there? Probably what, a couple hundred bucks. It, how much is it going to cost to man the booth, right? And what is it going to take to set it up and, and all of that? So you add those costs up and let's say it costs you 600 bucks. Well, if you got two or three leads out of it, if you could set three, you're ahead of the game. Right. And one of the things, you know, I, and I think I, I, I don't know if you're going to talk about this at your event or not, but we should talk about it here. So one of the things that I'm telling all of my clients is you got to really um, diversify your where your leads are coming from, because if you're counting on just one or two lead sources, like a lot of people are, I'm counting on Internet and referrals. Well, both are great but you probably need seven or eight other things that are going to generate leads. Cause when the contraction comes, as we all know, it's going to, you got to have different ways of making leads. Can you talk a little bit? Are you going to talk about that at LeadCom, by the way? Yeah, absolutely. Cause it's so important. And you know, yeah. we saw it happen during COVID there, there were people out there that were going door to door that had to kind of terminate that department. There were people out there that were, had lots of live events, trade shows, home shows, and all of them fell off the map. And so, you know, luckily, you know, there was some inbound inquiries to kind of balance that out a little bit, but things happen where one particular lead source doesn't perform like you hoped it would. You know, we've seen it millions of times where television's really working well, and then, you know, elections come into play, political campaigns, and you can no longer afford, you get bumped off of, you know, the schedule. Um, so there's just so many reasons why you need to diversify. You can't have all your eggs in one basket. You really need to become a master of lead generation and not just in one area, in, in multiple areas. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, my, man, you know, my mentor, Dan Kennedy, lives up in your area over there, taught me early on the worst number in business is one. You know, one key employee, one salesperson, one lead source, just go down the line. It's that's the worst. And I think right now, you you mentioned this before we turned on the recording. You mentioned the word apathy. Talk a little bit about about that, because what was your what did you say exactly? Uh, prosperity breeds apathy. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. When there's abundance, you know, uh, we just tend to, uh, you know, overuse or, or waste or, um, you know, and, and that's what happens is we don't handle the inquiries with the same rigor 
that we do when there are fewer of them, right? Yeah. And so we get sloppy. You know, we fail to practice. We fail to really hone in on our skill with cultivating and nurturing leads. And so it's, it's a concern because, you know, once contraction does happen, um, it really makes things very difficult for those companies that have bad habits. You know, people form habits and habits form futures. And the same thing with companies. Companies form habits and those habits will form, you know, profits or losses. Yeah. One of the things I know about uh, the great entrepreneurs that I've had the good fortune of working with and interviewing and talking with and um, is there is a always a little bit of paranoia, a little bit. And there's always the, and, and this is like the smartest ones, the most evolved ones will never believe that just because things are great this year, this quarter, this month, that it necessarily means it's going to be the same way next month, next quarter, next year. And I think that now is the time, especially now, you know, the news, they're starting, you know, they're starting with it. And the only way to, to slow down, the, the scary thing is the only way to slow down inflation is by triggering a recession, right? And wow. so if they really want to solve the inflation problem, and I don't want to get, I'm not an economist, I don't, I don't know anything, but I do know that they're talking about it. And, and I do know that, you know, history is history. And you and I both know, because you and I have been in business since the flipping, you know, we've been doing this since the 90s. So yeah. we've gone through three or four of these up and down cycles, and we've never seen anything like this before. I mean, this isn't even like, the mid 2000s this is something completely new and different but this is coming to an end too we just don't know when it's going to have a longer tail because of all the money that's slushing around out there but but if if you are in you know i'll, I'll just like tony said if you are in prosperity right now which you should be because if you're not in these times oh you know it's going to be ugly when it turns but prosperity does lead to apathy. And if you let your guard down now and you think this is going to continue on, then um, I'm sorry, but you may be in, in a world of hurt when things do turn around. Um, but Tony, we got to wrap up, but I definitely want to talk about lead. Con. I think, listen, if you're listening to this, um, you want to come and learn from a guy and, and, and his team, Megan is going to be there. Um, I'm going to be there, of course. John Anglis is going to be there. But um, I don't usually come on and, and, and do a lot of promotion. Um, but Tony, I believe in, and I think everybody, especially, especially right now, he's going to, you tell everybody what you're going to be talking about, and I'll shut up. But I really think that if you can get to Columbus, Ohio in May, at the end of May, um, get there. Um, it's, the tickets are like stupid and expensive because us sponsors are paying for everything. Um, mm -hmm. And Tony is, you know, uh, he, he, he prices things. He, some, him and I have, a, have this, this thing going back and forth about how low he prices things. So um, uh, this event, you can go to this event for like a hundred bucks. And if you get one little tiny little idea from it, it, it could transform your business. So tell us a little bit about what you're going to be talking about. And then how do we get those, those, uh, the, the cheap, crazy cheap tickets? Yeah. So we're going to be talking about leads and leadership and, you know, building culture, uh, attracting and recruiting good talent. You know, I think that, you know, you can't take your leads with you next year. You can't take last year's gas prices or last year's lumber prices with you. I mean, but you can take your culture with you. You can take good employees, well-trained employees with you. And so that's kind of the focus this year at LeadCon. And we've got some great people there to do it. As you mentioned, guys like John Anglis proven uh, in our business, Bob Quillen, another guy who's built oh, a Bob's going to be there too. Okay. Awesome. Build a business. Yeah. So um, some, some real pros that are going to share, you know, leadership skills that will get you through any time. Um, so excited about it. And if you log on to tonyhody.com, you can save $500 off your ticket. As you mentioned, choose a great sponsor like G4 marketing and uh, you're there for 95 bucks, tremendous value. 
and we're hoping to see everybody there. Yeah. And if you don't like Tony, for whatever reason, um, uh, don't let that stop you because Megan's going to be there. And Megan <laughs> is uh, Megan is a badass. I was telling somebody, I, I just told Tony this. I am not impressed by most marketing people. It's a horrible thing. But I, I'll say it here in front of everybody. And so I'll put the pressure on uh, squarely on Megan. She is one of the sharpest people in not only in this industry, but that I've met. And she works with Tony as a consultant. And I, you know, you're, she's working with a bunch of my clients on scripting and process and really, and, and she's going to be there. So if you don't like Tony, at least Megan's going to be, if you don't like me, John Anglis is going to be there. If you don't like John, uh, Bob Quillen will be there. So uh, yeah. So get there. We hope to see you there. Uh, if you listen to the podcast, please come and say hi to me. Um, what else, Tony? Oh, they go to TonyHody.com? Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you go to TonyHody.com. I'm sorry, you said all of this. I'm going to say it again. You go to TonyHody.com, go to events. It's complicated. Go to events, but when you see the event, uh, make sure you choose the sponsor option and put in uh, G4 Marketing. The truth of it is you can choose any of them, right? Yeah. Between you and me, nobody else <laughs> is listening. You could choose right. any. So if you like somebody better, just choose them and you'll still get the discount. But um, for 95 bucks, this is a no brainer. The only thing is you got to go to Columbus, Ohio. But according to Tony, it's a nice place. It's great. What's what's Columbus, Ohio famous for? Well, the Ohio State Buckeyes, of course. But, okay. you know, they have literally rebuilt that entire city. I went down for an Ohio State game and I got lost in a town that I used to be so familiar with. They're not knocking down buildings. They're knocking down city blocks and really the entire city. Super modern. Great cool. place. Cool. Uh, Dustin lives in Columbus, I think. Doesn't he? Kirby? He lived in Hudson, Ohio the last time I talked to him. Oh, is that close to Columbus? It's cl closer to Cleveland. Where oh, okay. So now, mm -hmm. All right. Cleveland, Columbus. They're all the it's same, the right? Cincinnati. How, what airport do, do we fly into? Port Columbus. Port Columbus. Is it international or regional? Yeah, of course. It's what? Yeah, of course. It yeah, is. what? Of course what? <laughs> Of course, it's international. Oh, it's, it's international. Okay, all right. It's a major metro. And so, like American and Delta and Southwest go there. They do. You all might right. have to take two flights if you're coming from a no, flash, like Miami. All right, I don't like two flights. Yeah, but I'll be there, and of course, you're going to be there. Amen. All right, all right, Tony. So, as always, my friend, thank you so much. Um, I love. Uh, getting caught up with you and uh i hope everybody will show up at LeadCon and um hopefully you guys learn some stuff here i think the big takeaway is culture is important you know people are gonna give you freedom processes will give you control over your business um gotta diversify right now your lead flow don't let this fool you into you know, resting and getting too comfortable because this is going to change. So we want you to be ready. Um, I think that's, I think that's it. All right, everybody. So until next time, this is Brian Kaskavalsian with G4 Marketing Group, and this is the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. Let me ask you, did it help you look at your business in a different way? Did it spark an idea or ideas that you hadn't thought of before? Do you have a list of action items that you can take and implement into your business or your life today? I really hope so. If it did, I'd like to ask you a favor. Would you leave a five-star review of the podcast? By doing so, you'll help other contractors find the podcast more easily so that we can help them achieve more success, wealth, and freedom. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to the Wealthy Contractor Podcast so you get access to the latest episodes as soon as they're available. We're always striving to provide you with great content so you don't want to miss what's coming up. In fact, if you haven't already, make sure you go to thewealthycontractor.com and get your free copy of my latest book, The Seven Secrets to Becoming a Wealthy Contractor. Just pay shipping and handling and I'll take care of the cost of the book. And finally, a big thanks to G4 Marketing for sponsoring the Wealthy Contractor Podcast. 
For over 12 years now, G4 Marketing has been the secret back office relationship marketing team for hundreds of home improvement and home service businesses just like yours. You get the customer and our proven system turns that customer into five-star reviews and profitable repeat and referral business. If your home improvement or home services company completes at least 10 jobs per month, they have a solution that will work for you. To find out more, sign up for your free, no obligation, 10-minute discovery call at www.g4marketing.com forward slash strategy. That's G F O U R marketing.com slash strategy. Set your discovery call up today and they'll help you set your business up for long-term profits and success. So until next time, this is Brian Cascadalsi. 